Good morning, everyone, and I'd like to welcome you here today to the Jackson County Board of Supervisors meeting for Tuesday, February 14th of 2023. I have Don Schwenker and Ned Flegel, my and myself, Mike Steinitz, are your county supervisors. I have um, Lisa and Bjorn from the auditor's office. I have Luann in the background, our executive assistant. Todd Kinney, our county engineer, and Mary is here from the newspaper, I believe, yeah. Okay. So we'll call the meeting to order. And first on our agenda this morning is Mr. Todd Kinney, our county engineer. Good morning, Todd. Good morning. Um, so the first two items on the agenda are to approve two utility permits from Alliant um, for uh, two different areas, but basically to um, connect or install new uh, service lines. Electrical lines, correct? Yep, electrical. Look, look through the permit. I mean, they're gonna, they're, they're basically, they state that they will bore all roads, waterways, and improved driveways will be directionally bored, and they're gonna place it as far back against the right-of-way line as possible, 48 inches deep, so that's what the permit. Nothing in the roadway itself at this point. No, that's not what the permit says. So mm -hmm. they'll go to the right-of-way line and put it as close to the right-of-way right line as they can, so. Approval. I'll make a motion to approve. We got to do these two separately, or can we do them the same? Well, that's why I put them in separately. But if you want to do them together, then so we can do the first one. Uh, Richland's five sections five and six. You could do that one first. Okay. I'll second that motion. I have motion and second to approve light energies for Richland Township section five and six. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. Make, yeah. a, make a motion for the Otter Creek Township section one. Or 12. I'll second mm -hmm. that, but what about just that one? A, there's the installation of a single and three phase line at 300 Street, E55. That, we just did that That's in it. Richland Township. Okay. All right, good. Yeah, I'll second it. All right, so I have a now, I have a motion and a second for the line of energy's permit. Um, utility permit for section one and twelve and then I for township. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. All right. Next uh we had on the agenda for Joel Felpach driveway, but uh Roger needs to meet with him and they're not available to meet till next week. So we're gonna pull that till next week. Okay. The driveway. Mm -hmm. Table that? Yeah. Um, and then the next item is you guys already approved or awarded for contracts, but this the contract's just for your signature basically. So okay. you've done action on that. Do we need action on the signatures? No, I think you already took action on those, if I remember correctly. You I, did I, approve? I think we approved them. You I accepted the contract. Uh, yeah, why yeah. don't we approve the signatures? Maybe that way we I'll make a motion to approve the signatures for the rock contracts. I'll second it. Motion is second to approve the signature on the contract as previously approved. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. <clears throat> Motion carried. Okay. Well, that's it. Okay. <laughs> um, I, did, I sent you guys an email with the proposed road improvement policy. And then the scoring matrix uh, with an example of uh, three different, I think, roads that were either high ADT or we've gotten uh, petitions on. So you can kind of look that over. The DOT requires, if we're going to pay the road, when we program that road in the five-year program, which is required, it has to have it has to have 50 uh, paving points. So that's why I separated it out and I put the IODOT paving points because if it doesn't reach the 50, you have to have uh, a, a look you know, pretty significant reason why you're going to do that. Like, like there's going to be a new business or, a, you know, a co-op or something's going to be built on the road that's going to change the ADP. So, um, and then the other part of that for road improvement um, Thanks. includes uh, like a component for uh, the geometry of the road. So if we got a, a road that's got only one curve or less or one hill or less, yeah, those would score right. higher because... Um, there's less less safety related issues of 
of improving a road that has several curves or, or several hills that become an issue for, because once the road gets improved, the traffic speed will increase. So that's the bottom line. So that's why you try to avoid the, the, the road geometry. Issues. So with the curve and with the hills and whatnot in it, uh, I know some of these that do get paved, they still have a lower split them because of the fact of the curve or whatever it may be. But um, so what we would do is look at, uh, we would still want to meet the, the, Three R guidelines for rural road design, astro design guides. So, like, if the curves that are there, we go out and measure the, the length of curve, degree of curve, and if it falls within a design speed of thirty five to forty five, we would post it at say forty five. If it's less than thirty five, then we would have to post it accordingly. But we would not try to regrade it. We would just take the existing curve information and see where it falls, what design speed that existing curvature meets then that's the posting speed we need because we're not going to regrade this to 55 miles an hour. We would just see what curves are there, look at the design chart and see with that curvature that's already there, what should the posted speed be? Basically, we would back into the design speed, if you will. So I didn't really look at the point system in that good details, but does it include like a voluntary? Yeah, so well, contributions score differently, like in, by percentage of the project cost. So there's different points for that. And is this like the mat the matrix and the scoring system and a restructure plan? Is that part of our five year program that's going to be presented? We we can do whatever you want. Um, I mean, I think it's going to be good to have them kind of plans, or you know, I mean, a good explanation. I don't know. You know, there are different times we have videos, of course, or, or but uh, I don't know what your plan is. But. So I can, we can do whatever. So we can, we can talk about the road improvement policy at the five year program if you want. That's fine. It makes sense. Um, my plan was to kind of have <laughs> a chronologic pictures of like road, gravel road condition, like what we have. We have pictures of bad roads, obviously. And then kind of show what a road section should look, look like. And then I have some pictures from like Clinton County of what it looks like once we disc the shoulders, once we bring it on the road, once we compact it and we put rock down. So kind of people get a, a visual of what it's going to look like. It's going to be a very rough surface to drive on when we take a road that's like this and build it up like that with material and rock and that kind of thing until that stuff, that material gets bladed a couple of times, traffic hits it and gets it packed back down. I mean, we're going to pack it with rollers, but um, I mean, time and traffic also do a lot of compaction too. So, <laughs> this, yes, to some degree. Well, I don't know that it's going to get worse, but I mean, the, the process itself, but yeah, you know, I like the idea of the explanation and just uh, that's what they're looking for right now. I mean, we certainly had plenty of calls in the last three or four days, and they're actually, you know, pretty good about the the fact that what the weather is and how what we can do and what we can't do. It's just like, what are we going to do going forward? Yeah. yeah, so the main thing of the gravel road plan is to basically, you know, reestablish the cross section. And, and the first, the biggest component of that is putting crown on the road so we can get water from the center of the road to the edge of the road and then hopefully into the ditch. That's the that's the main goal of this first, first process. And then um, we can do that on a, a, a big section of road. Like we talked about, the goal is trying to do 10 miles per district this year, 10 or 15 the next year. And then after about three or four years, four or five, maybe pending, we should be able to get all the roads in each district. But we're going to start with the highest ADT roads and work our way down, basically. So. And it completely makes sense for to have. I just don't know that we had that in place before. So I appreciate that. And hopefully we can uh, get that out to the public and explain that and, and, uh, Go forward. I talked to Todd about the roller situation a little bit, and you want to kind of you say you're going to check that other place, or yeah. So if you remember, we got a price on a roller, and it was like forty one hundred bucks to to ship it. And uh, I emailed back the supplier, and I said, hey, "Is this a typo?" And he said, "No." Um, and then I asked, "Well, what if we put two on one shipment? If we buy two, and he said it would probably be five to six hundred dollars less expensive." Than the 4100 so 4100 plus whatever 3500 uh basically which i said okay but uh um what i'm going to do is get i think they're coming out of canada though from this supplier and he said depending on if he's got two in the yard and he can put two on the trailer at once then there would be a savings yes but if he doesn't have two in the yard when we order two and he's got to go find one 
and they ship separately, there's not going to be any savings that way. So I'm going to look for another vendor, hopefully closer, possibly, and, and uh, see if we can get a comparable price. And because, like I said, we got we have some time. You know, we probably won't start this process till you know April, May. It just depends. You know how the how spring and summer and everything kind of progresses on the road condition. So um, you don't want to start it too early, but I want to get started as soon as we can. So you actually also said uh, mentioned something about a rental that would it first maybe month or two that we could try and see or, and that 70% of the rental would go off the purchase price. I don't know if that's still available. And, or you also mentioned maybe um, using or borrowing or renting Clinton County's equipment. Yeah, so the 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 one, the quote is still with the, the original quote, still is if we rent it for a month, it's a minimum of one month, 70% of that rental comes off of the purchase price. That's still available. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, you know, Clinton County would, we should have at least you know one that you guys should be able to borrow, um, but you know if we end up if the money's there to buy two, we'll buy two and we'll use both of them. So um, I guess that's the thing. If we need to, I, we will proceed that way. If we need one and two at a given time, and and we're still willing to work with Clinton <clears throat> County, maybe that's our avenue too. I, I don't. Know. Yeah. So we have uh, we have three in Clinton County. So um, the deal is. Um, it works in Clinton County, we're broken into three maintenance districts. So uh, we have two retrievers. So if one retriever is in district two, then at least one of the rollers, if not two, is in there. So they're retrieving and rolling. And then another district can be doing that too. So then, you know, basically we can have two districts, one at the same time. That would be ideal if you could get a second retriever. As we get as we get more guys trained and, and we figure out, you know, here yeah. in Jackson County what, what we need to do, then you get another retriever and you could have multiple districts pulling their roads and shaping the roads all at once instead of having it have to go around uh you know one district at a time so i right, certainly like the idea of working together and able capable of doing that that would be really i mean good neighbors usually get a little bit better with work together yeah and i think we'll probably i was talking to my road foreman in Clint county that we may end up taking one of our operators with a machine and retriever up here Two, so we'll have one a machine, our machine with a retriever that we could use like as a demonstration or training, and we'll have the one in Jackson County machine that's fitted with the new retriever. So we, you know, we could be having two working, you know, simultaneous when we start into this process too. So like it all. Appreciate it, Todd. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I'll keep forwarding them calls. <laughs> What's that? I'll keep forwarding them. Yeah, calls. Thanks. <laughs> All right, thank you. So, um, next on our agenda is visitors, visitors for citizens. Is there anybody here or online that would like to speak or approach the board? Seeing none, Lisa, are you prepared? I am. Um, Marty was here last week, and we know that we need to move forward with the carpet bids for the zoning office. So, I have asked Marty to come in during my portion of the board today to open up and to talk about the flooring. So Marty, if you want to, so we can get moving forward on this project. Morning. Good morning, Marty. Good morning, Marty. Um, we did open these last week, but we just had some questions on them. Um, hopefully I got it all straightened out. Um, I got three, I received three bids. Uh, do you want me to explain it, um, two of them bid 20 ounce and 26 ounce carpet. I would highly suggest that we go with the 26 um, because there's a lot of traffic through the building, okay? Um, with that being said, one of them uh, bid a carpet that is 15 foot wide so there's no seams in it. The other two are 12 foot wide and they, so it will have a seam in the, in the carpet. And I'm sure you guys looked at the carpet mm -hmm. and you see where it failed, it was at the seam. So I just wanna point that out. <clears throat> With that being said, um, the bid from Justin Feller is, and I'm just, going to do the 26 ounce one, okay, okay. Um, is 
$3,117.60. And that's for a 12 foot carpet with, it'll have the theme, okay? Is that one room, two room? That is two room. Okay. And that's doing the first office? And the, the courtroom, court okay. yes. Yes. His bid is kind of different and I tried to reach this gentleman, but I couldn't get it done. So I think I got it the price right by what what is here. <clears throat> the second one is from Bright, Bright Box Four Covering. Again, um, I don't know the ounce on that they priced, but I did try to try to reach them and they said they would get back to me and never did. I called them again this morning and couldn't get through. Nobody was there. But his bid or their bid is $3,290 for both rooms. Again, that's a 12 foot carpet. It will have a seam. The third bid is from Till Flooring. Uh, he did price a 15 foot uh, carpet, wide carpet, so there will be no seams. And his bid is forty one hundred and forty one dollars. That for twenty six ounces. Yes. Yes. Forty. Forty one forty one. Oh. Um. How how many of them bid, or did they all bid a? Did you say twenty ounce? Well, the, all but the one. Of a bright box bid, those bids are for 26 ounces. Yes, yeah, and, and bright box, I, I can't tell because it's not on his sheet, either one. And like I said, I tried to make contact with him. I did <clears throat> talk to someone over there and they said they would get back to me with that information, <clears throat> excuse me, that information, but never did. And then I tried to call him again this morning uh, and to no avail. So I guess my question is, if some, if one or two of them bid a 20 ounce, I would just like to know what the difference is. And I don't know what the difference between this carpet is a 20 or 26, whatever it is. I've... I'm pretty sure this is 26. And I'm pretty sure the gray, the original carpet is the 20. And how old is it? Uh, 30 years old. The gray, I would say. So if the 20 lasted me 30 years, per se. I, normally I have found that when you buy the best carpet, you get sick of looking at it after 10 years, so you buy new anyway, whether it's wore out or not. But that <laughs> isn't the case here, as you know. <laughs> yeah. And some of this carpet should have been replaced 10 years ago, because well, it has I'm, rips I'm in it. I'm still curious of what the difference in prices price is for the 20 ounce. Market. Yes, I have two prices on the 20 ounce. Uh, I do not have Justin's figured out, but, but yeah, you need you need to add up the numbers. Is that what you're saying? Well, well the difference know? between the carpet on Justin is the one is uh, seven twenty and the other one is eight seventy. So that would be uh, eighty. The rest of the installation and the shipping is the same. Yeah, I would think, yeah, it should be. Yeah, I would think tear out whatever it is. That's yeah, I would think it would be the same. The, the only difference would be that the price of the carpet. Right. You know, what do you have there? Square foot? Um, 870 from 720 or 720. The price, I, the square foot isn't on that one. Um, one is thir the, the, the magistrate's office is 37 yards, and the other one, the courtroom, is 46. Who's the other one that um, quoted Till quoted the the twenty the twenty ounce would be uh, for the magistrate's office would be uh, sixteen thirty four, so that's less than that's like a hundred dollars less. And the courtroom is. Twenty-two eighty-seven on the 
on the courtroom. So you, you know, you're talking 300 bucks. So we're talking a difference total from low well, to I second low was a hundred and seventy dollars. Yeah. yeah. Basically, you know, you lose 170 from what I'm looking at. Yeah. 3117 to 3290 and the two lowest, yeah. Above, all or above, okay, timely manner as far as supply and demand. And Good day. Well, no, he's not been able to get in contact with two of them. Right. <laughs> and I, I you know, before I would say, I would probably take two to three weeks, probably. I, I don't know that's what, but that's usually what it takes. Can we finish by then, I suppose? Depends what else goes wrong, you know. I'm only one person. Okay. I understand. When you're looking at a thousand dollars difference. I'm, I'm okay with some themes. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I've always been, I've always been uh, custom, I guess, to full foot carpet. I don't know that there's a problem. I usually stand behind it if there's an issue, but yeah, if that's been in here 30 years and that's all the damage that's done to it right now, I mean, it's still livable with it. Right. <laughs> and there's a lot of traffic goes would been in and out of that room. Well, yeah, and I don't know room. what the traffic will be now either. You know, of course, it depends on what we use them. Yeah. Now, okay. the scene, you know, I look in the courtroom and it looks like they put a chunk of carpet, a chunk of carpet, and the seams right underneath the chairs. When they do a 12 foot, could they spin that, run the piece lengthwise, and have the seam more off the one side where? I would have to talk to the carpet layer, but that would be a, I would think it would be a possibility. Yeah. And they just have to come it, would, yeah, it would make sense, I think, even with the doorways the way they're situated. But... Yeah, if you put the in the magistrate's office, if you put the seam to the south side, would be less wear and tear mm -hmm. on it. And then the other, and then the other one, I put it on the north side. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I would touch base with with that. I change your square footage. So, so it could. Um, I, I I would like to move forward with it. Well, they're both bidding twenty six thousand. Well, and, and I'm sure, like, like I said, I don't know what. Whatever. Yes, yes, yes. Because when I went in there, I went to the next room, the where Lori's going to be, and I showed them that carpet, and that's the samples they give me, and I took that to Lori, and that's she picked it out the color out of that sample. Well, um, <clears throat> now, are you having any concern at all? I don't know if this fellow got all this any concern with the fact. Well, all I know is he, I think he laid carpet for the guy in Springbrook. Correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody knows that. But that's where I think he's he, worked for Floors and Moore for yeah. several years. And then he's, he had his own business now. I think he told you he was up in Asbury now, laying yep. a building up there. Yeah. I mean, he's been around a while. He's on the right on the Right across from Bellevue Sand and Gravel. Yeah. I, I can't vouch for him, but when he was here, he seemed like he knew what he was doing just by talking to him, you know. So all local and the county type of deal. Mm -hmm. Yes. I try to do that. Do you want to possible. stick with the, with Feller being a low bid, do we want to stick to the 26 ounce or the 20 ounce and save the 150 bucks? I mean, 150 bucks doesn't. It's 150 bucks total. Yeah, the, 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 the price of the carpet. Yeah, because the carpet, it, it's this thing is really hard to figure out because he he's got the little room carpet is seven twenty, and and the twenty six ounces eight twenty. But then down below, then he's got all the tear out shipping, and then he's got both rooms. See, I'm going to let you decipher this because I couldn't get a hold of him, and I don't know if you want to hear it around. Maybe it's more than that. I can't. I cannot. 
decipher that. Like I said, I tried to get a hold of the gentleman and uh, it, it, I couldn't do it. To me, it looks like both room, the 26 ounce would be $2,152 for just the carpet. And $1,787. Labor? $1,785.60 for the 20 ounce. No, well, don't even give it to me out there. Well, 2152. Otherwise, yeah, he's just kind of doubled. Shipping stays the same, tear out. There's 250 for both rooms, 125 for one room. Install for both rooms, 465. Install for one, the little room is 225. Basically, so you have 2152 for the carpet. We have what else? So 2152 for carpet. You're doing both rooms. You get okay. 465 for install. 465. Mm -hmm. 250 for tear out. 250. Yeah. Shipping 150. 150. Yeah. Labor for platform 100. That's it. That's total. That's both rooms. For both rooms. 3117. There you have it. There's 60 cents on there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> the carpet was 60 cents. Yes. And I would say that's obviously what, yeah, and that's for both rooms, yeah. Because he doesn't break it down. Courtroom all separate. He just does a little bit separate. Right. And you have a total for right box as 30. 3290. And that we don't know what else that is. No, we do not. That goes with Sorry. My motion would be to go with Keller. Was that a motion? That was my motion. So just on the yeah, I figured up the 20 ounce and it came to a 2750 versus 31. For both rooms? Yeah. Yeah, twenty seven fifty and sixty cents versus the thirty one. <clears throat> so what's the difference in that Don? Four hundred bucks. Two fifty, three fifty, three seventy, yeah. I think for the little bit of money, I think we should go with the heavier ounce because I do believe it'll last longer. Like I said, this carpet, I don't know about this carpet because this was replaced for the 26 ounce, correct? Yes. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second to approve the low bid uh, for power. Install the carpet and both rooms. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. So I had to take the truck, the power truck to the Ford dealer again, the engine light come on. Uh, they're going to check it out. And also, I have one more gentleman <laughs> coming to look at the roof to, to see if, uh, what his price is. That way, I'll have three three bids on to, to do the roof, to repair the roof. And the heating right. unit at the care facility. Pardon me? Heating unit at the care facility. Um, I haven't got to that yet. I will call Jared. I, told, I know I told you I'd call him, but I haven't done that yet. Uh, the last I talked to uh, service one, he was going to come down and look at it. And I know he came down and looked at it, but I don't know if we got a price back. I will find that out. Okay. Whoever's looking at it, tell them we need to move along and make a decision. I mean, we're getting out of the season a little bit, but we still need to move on and make a decision. I will do that. Thank you. And the basement looks 90% better. It even looks better now because I think the laptop left 
the the monitors that we think are no good is what I thought. Mike might have a guy that might want them to, to thoroughly check them out to make sure they're no good or good. And we're we're gonna give them to him because they're they won't do us no good. Okay. Yeah. And if not, we'll take them to the landfill, but they're about 200 pounds a piece. And we, if we can get, find somebody that wants them, we want to do that instead of spending them money just to get rid of them. All right. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Marty. Yep. Have a great day. <clears throat> Thank you. That's okay. Thank you. All right, Lisa, sorry to interrupt your business there. That's okay. We, I knew that we needed to move forward on that. Yeah. So this morning, I need a motion to approve the minutes of the February 7th, 2023 board proceedings as written by Auditor Smith and authorize publication in the official newspapers. So moved. I'll second that. Motion and a second to approve the minutes from the February 7th, 2023 board proceedings. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. I need a motion to approve and authorize the auditor's office to issue warrants in the publication of the claims listing in the amount of $598,291. I'll make that motion to approve the claims. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the claims in the amount of $598,291. Uh, just a side note is we had a fair amount of um, construction bills in there again. So we are moving forward. I did come down here this morning and there's action. So. They're working in the mud. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. I need a motion to accept and place on file the Veterans Affairs Commission meeting minutes for the December 14th, 2022 meeting. I'll move. I'll second that. Motion and second to approve and place on file the Veterans Affairs Commission meeting minutes for December 14th of 2022. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. I need a motion to approve the renewal of the special Class C retail alcohol license with Living Porters and Outdoor Service to Preston Valley Golf at 42998 45th Street, Preston, effective February 2nd, 2023 through February 1st, 2024. So moved. I'll second that. I have a motion for second to approve, to approve the renewal of a Class C liquor license to Preston Valley as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. We have received word um, concerning the next five opioid settlements. It is from Teva, Allergen, Walmart, Walgreens, and CVS. And I just want to make sure um, who you would like to have the designated person to sign the documents and the participation document in the new opioid settlement. Um, if you, I mean, I have been designated, but I didn't want to presume that. So it's up to you as far as who you would like to sign this paperwork for um, these next five settlements. I, I seen that email come through. I guess my question is, Lisa, are you willing to do that? Sure. I mean, we, I, I only do the signing of the documents. I have no control over the money. Obviously, well, you yeah. do. So it's just a matter of us getting the money in. I can't tell you how much we're going to receive because they're waiting for all of the counties and the cities in the state of Iowa to sign these participation agreements. And then we'll know what money is going to come to us here in Jackson County. Or what we can use it for. Well, I mean, I handed out that sheet yeah. and it is very specific. So I I don't know what we're going to use it for. Yeah, I guess yeah, if you look at that and look at some of the items that are listed there, you know, how far can you think outside the box on them? But right. <laughs> I think it was a training, good job. Without yeah. getting spanked. Yeah. A lot of training at the new gym. Yeah. Well, I did, I did a lot. Of, I did visit with John about this. And, you know, he does not want to be the designated signer. And he does um, agree that we need to move forward. And he agrees that we should sign these participation agreements. Well, whatever funding we can get, I'm sure we can find a spot either in the schools or in the, you know. Yeah. Law enforcement or wherever it may be. Yeah. So if I'm the person that you would like to designate, I would need a motion to approve and authorize Auditor Smith to sign the documentation to participate in the new opioid settlements with Teva, Allergen, CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart. I so still make that motion for Auditor Smith to do the above statement. I'll second that. Motion and second to approve Auditor Smith to sign the related documents as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Um, thank you for that. And I'd like to call Shelly forward because. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, I call Shelly forward because we do need to try and move forward as best as we can when it comes to um, getting our maximum uh, tax levy. Got to get the motion going, and I know that we've got some things happening in the state of Iowa and in the legislature. So Shelly, can you kind of enlighten us? <laughs> All right. Um, I know well, you sent to us, and I don't want to interrupt. You sent two different color coded. Okay, we don't yes. we don't have them in front of us, so correct. Okay. I mean, well, I did not give you more copies. I so did would, not you give like, you would you like copies before we make this? I would you like that. to visually see what she's saying there? Right now, you're talking about yeah. setting the maximum. This is green and red and red. Okay, and you're wanting to set it for what? The 17th of March? That's March the question. <laughs> well, March 7th is a public hear a potential public hearing date. If we do it today, our potential public hearing date is March 7th. For the maximum levy property tax. Maximum property tax levy hearing, public hearing. Um, normally, March 7th would be the day that we, the first day that we could do this. The last day that we would do be able to do this and still be on a March 31st deadline, which is our normal deadline. Mm -hmm. But because the state has, you know, put their hands in the pot um, to possibly limit us in our valuations, reduce our valuations by that 2% on residential rollback. Um, they, if they pass that law, which I believe is being debated this afternoon, um, then they would push our deadline back to April 30th. So if they do that, then today is a moot point, but we don't know that until this afternoon, hopefully, um, and might possibly be tomorrow or Friday before we would <clears throat> know. So... I don't know whether you want to approve this contingent upon what the state legislature does. I don't even know if you can do that. Um, we could have you approve the green sheets, which is the higher uh, levy dollars with and put that in the levy notice, the maximum levy notice. And then at the hearing, for the budget amendment or uh, the regular budget hearing, you could reduce that green, those green dollar amounts down to what you want. This any way, a dollar amount doesn't mm -hmm. have to necessarily be the red. No, if we because we have not approved them, we have really not approved our budget yet to say we're good with it. Right. right. So right. um right. we just uh, this is just, just, so much just a maximum, but again, you can lower it to whatever yeah. you want. This is the combination, combination yeah. uh, of, of those levies. You could lower it by somewhere in between the, the green and the red. You could lower it below the red. <laughs> I guess my assumption is that we're going to get the extension. I've always heard that, and I've heard it, and I've heard it. But if we don't, it's not going to just throw us in the <clears throat> ditty. It's going to throw everybody else in the ditty because yeah. I'm sure they're depending on it. You know. Yes. And yes. I'm not quite ready to... You know, unless again, if you if you go ahead and publish the maxes so that we can reduce, uh, um, you can reduce. You can't raise, but you right. can reduce. That's why I suggest going with the, the higher amount, the green amount. And can you disclose that amount? Um, for the general basic, it would the dollars would be four four million one hundred eighty six thousand two hundred fifty seven dollars. The general supplemental would be one million four hundred ninety-eight thousand seven thirty-three. The Pioneer Cemetery would be twenty-nine thousand four hundred and fifty-nine dollars. The jail bond fund would be three hundred and sixty-seven thousand four seventy-five. And the rural services would be two million. Five hundred and seventeen thousand nine nineteen. So, can we have a round number of the? If would there be an increase to our levy? Is that what yes. you said? Okay. Yes. 
Can we have a round number of what that might be? Of the levy rate? Yes. Of the green? Of the green? Of the higher of the two, okay. yes. For countywide levies, do you want an individual by levy? No, rate I think just total. total. Okay. Right, well, well it, it doesn't, some people might not get the total because of where they live. So, well, what, what I'm going to give you is the countywide, which would be the all the general okay. services and then the rural. Okay. So, the first one is the countywide, and that would be. 5.074648. Mike, are you looking for a, a pennies? Is that yes. dollars and cents yes. pennies? How about what, what would the levy go up, Shelly? Yes, What's the, the, levy, levy? the total levy between um, countywide and rural is 44 cents, 0.44438. And that's the max. That and would be the maximum. Did you increase. split that in the general basic and the supplement, or is that split? The general, um, the general would be the, at the three point five. Okay. And then the general supplemental would be at forty one point two five three zero seven. So we're looking at an increase in the supplemental fund, which is fund two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at an increase in fund eleven, which is our rural. One was sixteen point some cents, and one was twenty five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the supplemental went up. Would have would be going up. Sixteen point eight. Yeah, sixteen point eight. No. Nope. To get to the dollar amount, mm. we're looking at no. In your email, you said this increase. one will go up sixteen point some cents. Yes. And the other one will go up. 25 and together they equal 44.4 yes. cents. Right. Yes. So yes. 16 Sorry, point eight. Uh, I include that email. So that would be 16.8 to 25.6. That don't equal 44. Yeah. There's a lot of discussion in the newspapers and on the media now that <clears throat> taxing entities faced with this potential 126 to 133 million, I think is what one TV thing reported across the state of Iowa. And I know that there's million dollar differences down in the flat cities that I had heard. So everybody's Can you tell me what is how it affects us? 27.9 cents. Increase. And it's 27.9 and 16.5. There you go. 16.5, 27.9, respectively. And the rule was 27.9, correct? Yes. So that includes our plan, if you will, for restructure and rebuild. And so was there a, was there a, Again, a round number that if how it affected us this change in rollback. It put us back to a flat, pretty much a flat uh, valuation increase. So we lost the about whatever our increase in revenue would have been because of assessment. It was in the general, I believe it was somewhere around seventy six thousand uh, tax dollars. Mm -hmm. um, it went down to I think it was seventy two thousand or. Uh, we lost seventy two thousand, so we would be gaining about four thousand dollars in property taxes in the general. <laughs> and because the general fund is maxed out, which has been maxed out for yeah for as long as I've yeah. been here. Yeah. yeah. Well, that for most of our bills are. Paid. And I think yeah. the other thing in looking forward, um, looking to next year is. This is going to be more difficult based on some of the reading that I've done already. Mm -hmm. What the state legislature is going to do to. I've been trying to read some of that stuff where they're combining different levies yeah. and restricting growth and restricting market. It's like, how, how can how can they yeah. do that? Because you you read what they're saying where you can restrict how much property values increase, but then again, you go to the assessors and the state comes in and if you're not within what market value is, they they do an equalization order and jack it. I mean, so it's almost setting one side up to fail versus, you know, it, it, well, well, they're always contradicting each other what they're trying to do to the point where, uh, I mean, yeah, you're tied, tied. I mean, we're, our hands are tied. 
Well, to, to the max. Wrong, but the assessor's office, when they set those value, those assessed values, they put it to, or they use the market value. But then the state comes in and looks at those values and says, "Oh, you you raised it too much. It's it's too high." So you they come in and roll uh, change back. the rollback. Yeah, they change the rollback percent. So it's a moot point for what the assessor's office does. They're manipulating the data all the time. They're yeah, manipulating what the value of the houses are based on equalization orders and manipulating as far as what the rollback is. I mean, it I mean, I can see he certainly so, needs to with. I mean, you can almost take away the last two years because it's coming back to where it was. And trust me, I see it every day. But you know, they, it was it was insanely over mm -hmm. for a year and a half or two years, basically. And now with the interest rates up and, and valuations, and I mean, it's coming it's coming back around full circle. But to, for him to make an evaluation, yeah, I can't see. Why, you know, I go down the road and see four or five brand new houses. They're really nice houses. And where's my revenue? Where is that revenue? I mean, it's, to me, there's got to be much more assessed revenue than I, than I don't see. I, I, I would, when you said 76000 I think I just yeah. can't imagine that. Uh, to me, that with the right, the, I know the rollback took away what your, you know, assessment might have done, but still new assessments to me should have been more than that. Well, I Remember, I think I remember seeing somewhere in all of those um, restrictions that they will not allow us to use the increase in construction, you know, the, the new construction. That that 2%. You mean that's going to be put on next uh, tax year? Yeah, I don't think they will let us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how can you do that? Well, we have to yeah, we have we have have rates. Is that what economic What's development is? Yeah. Mike, this is the ISAC thing, the email that was sent out. Automatically adjust levy rates down based on growth evaluation of over 102.5%. So you can't, it's almost like that's the max growth. Yeah. And they'll readjust it if it's more than that down to 102.5. So you could have a brand new city with you know, one hundred million dollar valuations of on those houses, and from what I've read, the state will not allow us to use the valuate the taxes on those houses. So this is a that's what an I email that was put out by ISAC uh, today. The Senate Ways and Means Subcommittee will consider Senate Study Bill eleven twenty four at three forty five this afternoon. Um, this bill would consolidate the general basic and the supplemental levies. It would consolidate rural basic and supplemental levies automatically adjust levy rates down based on valuation growth over 102.5%. It will limit property tax revenue growth. It'll limit the reasons for additions to basic levies. It'll make adjustments to bonding and leasing thresholds. And it'll also add some requirements to the annual financial reports. This is handicapping right here. Can okay. I just say you know I should have been campaigning last fall? <laughs> it doesn't do any good. No, I know, it doesn't. No. Uh, I know it talk about unfunded mandates. Wow. Yeah. So uh, we're looking at some very tough budgeting. Well there was not, a county that I read, not to interrupt you, Mike. There was a county that I read that they took over an ambulance service and they hired nine ambulance personnel. And I think that budget was like a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar expense. They don't know how they're going to pay for it now. They have no idea how they can sustain that. So they probably are going to have to cut. I mean, it was a, it was a it was a very sad email that I read because you could just hear the pain as they were typing. You know, knowing that they created something wonderful, and yet because of funding, they're probably going to have to do uh, go in a different direction. Well, That's not Jackson County, but there was another county. So there still is the fact that if it's over one point two, you have to. Publish or I don't think you're even allowed to do that for the additional. Well, just did that last year, didn't we? I know, but I don't think that they will let us. From what I read, true property tax set. Okay, so this I guess we'll have to move forward with what we have right now. So we can't yeah, right. project. We can't project what's going or what they're going to Hopefully do. Hopefully, well, they will come to their senses. I, I think my suggestion would be that we publish what I call the green. 
go ahead with the green and then continue budget discussions. Correct. Yeah. I I would tend to agree with that. I'm not ready to, you know, to make a commitment to. I would recommend you get a new printout too and go through it and look at it. And so we can. Did you find anything that we had wrong? Speaking of that. A few things. Okay. Okay. So, like a, let us know. Nope. I didn't get a big chance, but I didn't get. I got through a couple of departments, but there's a few things here and there, so okay. we'll figure it out. You're talking about the whole book budget. Yeah, the book. Budget. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fine. You can print me one out. That can compare. Make sure she prints it out like the same. <laughs> the same way that she got us that rookie thing. It was weird. I was flipping pages back and forth, and I was like, "This is like dating." See if I understood it, and I did. <laughs> it's like it's like it's it's like like oh, I can get the data. I can figure it out, but it'd be a large table. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, we need a, okay, so with that being said, do we need a motion to set it as March 7th. Here's what I'm going to say today. Then I would like to have a motion to approve the publication in the three official county newspapers of the notice for the public hearing on the maximum possible tax levy to be included in the fiscal year 2024 county budget with the public hearing date set for March 7th, 2023 at 10 a.m. in the boardroom at the courthouse. And so that date will stay no matter what, even if they roll things they extend out. it. This is just, I mean, you're not going to raise your tax dollars any more than what we've got on the green. Great. So right. that's so we've got to really extend or not. We can, we know this is going to be the max we would ever do. It could only go down from here. So we can Correct. keep on our same timeline, yes. whether they extend it or not, and just not be the ones trying to get it in. April, so I believe so. And unless unless you make the motion contingent upon the extension, uh, well, see that's just it. It, it should. Be, I don't. It should make I any difference. The benefit. Yeah, I get it. Well, I'll make that motion. Board. Okay. I have to go through it. Yeah. I guess there's that, but uh, I mean, we still have three weeks to do that. Right. But the problem is, we make this motion, it goes to the paper. Yeah, but that's the maximum. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I know, but that is it's still so yes. if we do a contingent, then we're going to have to rerun a new ad and all this kind of stuff because yeah. you know well, what I'm can, saying. And I will, we can still reduce the levy. levy but, right. Well, I second that motion. I vote to the second to uh, approve the publication in the newspapers on the possible levy as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. That's all that I have for the board today. The last line's already been taken care of. Yep. And pray. <laughs> well, I don't right. know where it's going, but pray. Thank you, to keep your, you know, politics and religion set, you know, separate the different states. Thank you, Shelly. No, sorry. Uh, and when you're on board, good morning. Trying to have the shortest appointment this morning. Calendar this week, um, at 10 o'clock, which <laughs> we're coming right up on. Um, I kept has a weekly legislative update session by Zoom if we choose to participate in that. Otherwise, at four o'clock this afternoon, it's a Maquoketa River Watershed Management Authority Executive Committee meeting by Zoom for Don. Tomorrow, February 15th at 9.30 a.m., um, Nin will be on KMAQ's Just Talk. <clears throat> Theoretically, that will be Sherry's last day, I believe she said in her email. So. They don't know what's going to happen to that. She didn't know what was going to happen to it after that date. So she's so retiring long. again. That's what she said. That's what it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also on the 15th um, at 6 p.m. is conference board meeting um, here for all of you. Thursday, February 16th at 9 a.m. is a housing trust fund meeting um, in Dubuque or by Zoom for NIN at 1230 we have a work session on the Law Enforcement Center for all of you. 
And at 6 p.m. that night is Limestone Bluffs RC and D by Zoom for Don. Friday, February 17th at noon is a DCAT meeting in DeWitt for Mike. I have 11 a.m. District 6 update. Oh, okay. Zoom, we talked about that. Oh, the, the, weekly, the weekly update. Right. Yep, yep. And she just started putting on the calendar and said, it'll be every week unless we say otherwise. So, mm -hmm. okay. All right. Monday, February 20th is a state holiday. So state offices will be closed that day, but the courthouse will be open. Um, at five o'clock um, that afternoon is a Mississippi Valley workforce meeting um, by Zoom for Don. And at six o'clock is a zoning committee commission meeting downstairs in the community room or by Zoom for any of you. And at seven o'clock, I tentatively have it be the regular meeting date for together we build. If any of you wanted to go to that, our next regular meeting will be on Tuesday, February twenty first at nine a.m. And that afternoon at two p.m. is a Mississippi Valley Workforce CEO meeting in Muscatine or by Zoom for Don. They usually like to do those According to the in person. Thursday, it will be attached the packet for the next meeting. The meeting will be via Zoom. Oh, okay. So. Good. And at five o'clock um, that Tuesday, the 21st, is a conservation board meeting at Hurstville um, for any of you that choose to attend that. And I think that is the sum total of the business I have for you today. Mm. Well, third three. Told ya. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you. Are there any, we will have, uh, after the meeting, I suppose we'll have a little budget talk yet and conversations. Any board or commission reports that we, um, we did talk to county attorney and he is updating for a closing date for oh. across the parking lot. And he's been in contact and did a title opinion on it. There's a couple links on it, so they have to be clear. Uh, 911 board meeting again. Oh, what did we miss, Dan? Dan, what did we update there? Um, they're using the microwave tower. Yep. We're waiting on the repeaters. Um, trying to get some research done on a tower that's possibly not being used. Yeah, the Bernard Tower is not being used anymore, so we don't know that they're going to decommission that or not. But I've called Kyle. I have not heard back from Kyle. I told him to just keep me updated as we were progressing forward. Um, there was some talk here. Uh, they did, um, Motorola have hired Supreme, that's the name of it, Supreme, to install the radios in the, in the cars and the repeaters. So they're moving forward with that. So we are moving forward. I guess waiting on several items to still come. come in, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Chief Chief Miller and Chief Nixon were here from Preston and Sabila, respectively, um, representing Preston uh, and Sabila as they're talking radios. And I think we've got that ironed about, you know, as far as the extra radios that we have, where they're going to be located and available to whoever may need them. Um, again, we're still, I've sent. I think all of you updates what the grant that's being applied for for six hundred ninety five thousand dollars, I believe. So it looks fairly good for us. So again, if if you see Lynn, he's put a lot of time in on that and uh, done a lot of running and background and collecting data and putting it together. And and this gal that's writing the grant for us is doing her due diligence too, the way it looks. So it'd be uh, it'd be really helpful if that's the case and move forward with that. We did have a waste authority meeting. I had a waste authority meeting yesterday and they're in the process of hiring. They had their full-time employees still working, but he's going to pursue other avenues when they find a replacement for him. The state audit was finalized. Uh, we're all good. Um, revenue was actually down about 3% in the ending June of 22. And he attributes that to uh, basically not the end of the pandemic, but uh, when the pandemic started, there was just a dramatic influx of 
people cleaning their houses or garages, out, de de <laughs> decluttering, if you will. Um, it was, he said it was just tremendous. So um, we are working on the addition, the office out there. So that's being built as we speak. So um, yeah, they've got some good applications for the, for their position. So looks good for them. So judicial, we met, um, again, their big thing is about the merging of some some items and what's going to be, who's going to have control over what, and if they'll even have a local board. And um, from Des Moines, it sounds like there was a lady that met with staff, but would not allow the seventh judicial board to attend that meeting at all. It was originally set up for us too. And we got an email and said, you cannot attend. So there was a closed session type meeting of some kind, or has to be a reason to be closed, I would guess. But yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I read some of them. I don't read all of them, seventh judicial, but there sounds like there could be a little controversy there. Same with the work portion. Yeah, kind of the same thing that's going on with the mental health deal. Um, a couple of people from the board did go out to Des Moines and talked about their, I want to call it their troubled housing, the high risk people, and getting a system going locally around here, which would be in that 7th Judicial District, on basically training and arming their officers. They would go through the same academy as a, um, the police officers do to yeah. do all their checks and stuff just for the high-risk areas. So they're working on getting grant funding from that, and that sounds very promising and going forward. No, we had JCA meeting last week and uh, we had the new election of officers and that got situated for the next year. Um, they changed the appointment for elected officials from one to two years, kind of be more um, consistent with the, ele the election cycle so we don't have to recertify every every year to reappoint. And they're putting together employers for a job fair coming up soon. So um, they do this annually. So they're in the logistical work of getting that done. So everything's kind of going full steam. We did make contact when we had John Williams come in. I think it was John Williams talk about the Andrew um, jail or whatever. Um, we did put him in contact with JCAA to help with the Catalyst Grants or one of those programs out there that they might be able to utilize um, to help stabilize that building or get them more on track. So a few things going there, but good. Yeah, that's all great work in progress. Okay, any further further business before the board this morning? Motion to adjourn. I'll second that. We have a motion to second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. Meeting is adjourned.